If you want to harness the full power of producing motion graphics and animations inside of After Effects, there's no doubt at some point you'll be using Adobe Illustrator. To make your motion design life so much easier, here are five Illustrator to After Effects workflows you need to know to produce the best motion graphics. The first After Effects to Illustrator workflow you need to know about is how to quickly add icon animations to any project you're working on here in After Effects. So all the graphics we're using in this video can be downloaded for free on a website called freepix.com. So for example, if you're searching for some icons, you can just type that in here on this website. I'll link in the description and you can download any set of icons that you want. So here we have our icons in Adobe Illustrator. So in Illustrator, all I'm going to do is select our direct selection tool and I'll zoom in on icon. And say I want this icon right here. Well, I just need to copy one of these paths. So we see that I have two paths selected. All I need to do is select one of the points and delete it and make sure that entire path is deleted. And then we just select everything again, copy it, go over to After Effects. We'll go to Layer, New Shape Layer. We'll open it up, we'll add a path. We'll open a path one, select it, and paste that data in there. You'll see that we have our shape path here. To make this larger, you can hit Control T or Command T, and we can make the path larger. Then we go to Add and Add Stroke. And here at the top, you can increase the stroke width, and there it is. To animate this, just go to Add and Add a Trim Paths. Add a keyframe for end, and then set the end to 0%. And that's how easy it is to animate an icon as a stroke here inside of After Effects utilizing Illustrator. The next workflow you need to know about between After Effects and Illustrator is being able to set up big vector scenes like this where there's a lot of different objects being animated. Uh, it's actually very easy to do this. You can animate scenes like this within a couple of minutes. So here we are in Illustrator. When you download scenes like this for free or usually receive files, all the layers are gonna be grouped together. What we need to do is make sure that everything is selected and just go to object and click ungroup. And do this a few times until you see all of the groups and paths isolated underneath one layer. And with all the layers selected, go to the hamburger icon and click release to layers sequence. This will separate everything into its own layer within just one click. Then you just go ahead and select everything and bring it outside of the original layer. And then when this is done, just go to file and save it as an Illustrator file. And then just take that file you just saved from Illustrator, import it into After Effects, set it as composition, click OK. Then you can double click your scene. And if you want to scale anything, go ahead and select your layers, set them to continuously rasterize by clicking this icon here. And then when you scale this up, you will lose no quality detail because these are vector objects. And then to quickly animate everything, just move your anchor points on top of those objects and then use some transform values to animate your objects into your scene just like that. And you can animate full scenes like this just within a few minutes worth of time. Our next technique is all about using Adobe Illustrator to create a custom path animation for any object that you have. So let's say you have a graphic or a logo. You need to follow the path of, say, of a lightning bolt. Well, in Illustrator, you can download a graphic like that or create your own custom path. So here in Illustrator, I have this path that I can straight up copy with the direct selection tool. Just go ahead and select the entire path, copy it. And back here in After Effects, before we animate our graphic, I actually want to go to Layer, New, Solid real quick and just paste that data in there. But then I'll hit M on my keyboard to bring up the mask hit Control T or Command T. We'll go ahead and make this larger and then just copy the mass path. We'll go to our graphic, hit P on your keyboard for position and just paste that data in there. So now our graphic will follow that path. We also have the keyframes here that we can stretch out so we can expand the timing of the animation. So whether you decide to use a graphic or your own shape like a circle here to create your path, it's really cool to be able to do this technique. So the next technique I wanna go through is being able to animate the individual paths and objects within an object. So let's say for example, I want to animate the handles here on this clock. What I can do is find that object that we isolated in Illustrator. We can right click on it in After Effects, go to create and click on create shapes from vector layer. This will then create a shape layer and we'll have every single path and object right here inside of After Effects that we can animate individually. So for example, groups six and seven for my clock are the handles. So then I can open up these groups, go to transform group. Then I can animate any of these values by adding keyframes or I can just add like a quick expression like time master 20 and this will animate the handle. And that's how you can quickly animate an individual object within a large object in After Effects. Another great workflow you need to know about is how to create a seamless scene. So for example, I can have this scene go on forever. However, the background graphic that we're using is limited in size. 
So here's how I would approach the workflow. I have my illustration background right here. I'll go ahead and create a new composition with this. So here's our background. I'll right away, I'll go to layer pre-compose. I'll call it scene background and click okay. And if I animate the position of the scene to animate the background, I'll eventually run out of the scene. So to fix this problem, I'll go to effect stylize and we'll grab motion tile. And if I adjust the tile center, I can adjust the X value here and this will go on forever. However, if I scroll long enough, we'll be able to see the cut of the scene. So we have two options here. We can check on mirror edges, which, you know, for this scene, you can probably get away with it. But for another technique, what I was just doing is going back to Illustrator and selecting an object like a tree or whatever it is, copy it, go to File, New, create yourself a quick document, paste the tree in there, and then just go ahead and save this. You know, and then head back over to After Effects, import your tree, set the import kind of as footage, click OK bring our tree back into our scene. We can make it a vector layer by continuously rasterizing it and then just scale it up to fit your cut. We can hide the cut like this. However, if we animate the tile center now, our tree will not be in place. So then we'll just go to layer new null object. So if your null object selected, hit PR keyboard for position, go to your tile center, alt click the stopwatch for tile center and parent it to the position. So now as you adjust the position of your null object, the scene will move, but here is the cut. So now we can turn our tree back on, move the tree to that cut right there, hit PR keyboard for position for that vector layer and parent the position to the null object's position. And then you can just repeat this process and add other vectors into your scene so you can hide the cut of your seamless scene. To help you speed up your motion graphic workflow, be sure to download our free motion duck extension for After Effects. We also have over 20,000 templates in which you can drag and drop into your edit and quickly change the parameters to fit your needs. Be sure to check out everything with the links in the description below.